Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> She just likes being the face of the cast. <laughs> yeah, that's a. I'm, I'm the. <laughs> I mean, you literally are the only one on camera, so that's true. If it makes you all feel better, we can turn our cameras off too. Well, if it makes you feel better, I'm naked, so that's it. A- <laughs> no, that's how we record. Usually, we just do this for posterity's sake and like mm, propriety. Yeah. I don't know. Man, Donnie just like to watch. <laughs> yeah. Just like Craig. <laughs> Craig listens. <laughs> Craig. That's right. He doesn't have eyes. Do you guys find that now that you've done this for any amount of time, the only gifts you are ever given by loved ones are Nicolas Cage themed? God, yes. I think I've only received like one or two Nicolas Cage gifts, but I'm not very loved. So I have two pillows, <laughs> two Nicolas Cage ornaments. Nicolas Cage. I have a Nicolas Cage card. Oh, oh my God. I have the uh, two pillow. No, three pillows, one hand towel. Um, the pants, uh, a Nicolas Cage sweater with his face on a bunch of cats and the, uh, the Pickles Cage ornament plus a Thickles Cage ornament. I like that. <laughs> and- what does Thickles Cage look like? I, I'm guessing he has just some real juicy cake. Just dump truck. Yeah, yeah. he is. <laughs> Big old fucking ass. It's just how he looked when he was in his 50s, you know? Yeah, that, he was pretty thick of us at that time. He was thick at that point. Well, thank you all for being on here. I- <laughs> you know, you guys have one over on us and that you're all actually in the same room, something that we never do. But we're also all in Washington State. That's profound. So at this point, have you guys covered every to date Nick Cage movie that yeah, you just we, mentioned. we went chronological uh, unfortunately <laughs> cowards um, <laughs> <laughs> we started five years ago so <laughs> yeah that must create like a real like unfortunate I don't know season three or four like when you really just get into like the uh, oh, tax time pay the ghost and <laughs> shit like yeah. that yeah. you could equate it really to uh, Return of the King where it's like at the very end when they're all sitting in the pub, it's like you've been and seen shit that these people will never experience in their lives and you are forever changed and bonded. Uh, that's all- the third one, right? Yes. <laughs> that is the finale yep. of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always got like halfway through reading the Twin Towers no, and then like. It's episode six. Return of the King. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. So I have a question because Nick and I talk about this constantly. Can you guys watch other media and have it not be weird and have it not be weird? I thought it was going to be about dicks. It's no. always about dicks. I mean, it, oh. yeah. Can you, can you think about I'm, any other dick than Nick Cage? But then, it's, whenever I watch a non Nick Cage movie now, I'm very confused as to why Nick Cage isn't in it. Yeah. I mean, we're kind I of mean, getting points yeah. with that with some movies where it's like, you know, Nicholas Cage would have been fun in this one. Not usually confused. Sometimes just grateful. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, watching that god awful, I think it was like season three of American Horror Story with uh, Kathy Bates. I love oh, Kathy Bates. Yeah. She's one of my favorite actresses. But I thought, like, if they really had balls, they would have had Nicolas Cage play Madame LaLaurie. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, you already own her mansion. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> That would be nice. They wouldn't even have to like get him to leave home for a shooting episode. Yeah, exactly. He'd feel real comfortable. He'd just be shooting in his slippers. Like the retirement plan. Yeah. Look, you're going to need to hit at least $5 million for him to put (laughs) shoes on. (laughs) That seems to be the going rate. Seven for pants. Oh my God. I like to imagine that you hit five million. And it's like, okay, he's got shoes. We're not really, really ready to prepare or like to splurge on pants. It's in his so writer. Just, <laughs> the extra two million is for him to take the shoes off to put the pants on. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> That's how he gets you. He he films in the wild, so don't tell him that he's filming. <laughs> With his truffle pig. <laughs> so I know this is something that like. You only have to you have to see to appreciate, but we bought these mic stands. 
<laughs> fairly recently. And I'm really loving the fact that Sean's the only one that's so short. <laughs> that it's like pointed down at him and it looks like he struggles to like lift his head to speak. Like yeah, we need to get the boy. yellow pages for Sean. To sit on. I am on a very a tall thing. stool. I'm not this big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, have you guys watched that? The best times. The what? The TV pilot he did in '81 with uh, Crispin Glover and, and uh, freaking Jackie Mason. What? No, we no. have not watched yes, that. Yes, this is yeah. real. It's all on YouTube. It's probably the only place you could see it. How, well, that's how long terrific. Is it? It's an hour long. It's a TV right. pilot. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna check back with you guys in an hour. Yeah. Wait here. <laughs> yeah, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. No, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, I love. Is it Crispin terrible? Glover. Oh, it, it is. It's terrible. You I see mean, what it's I'm like, saying? Um, Look out, here comes Nick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, an after-school special from the 80s. like Written by kids for kids. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> kids are so dumb. Yeah, they're the worst. <laughs> they don't know shit. <laughs> and so is this show. <laughs> uh. Okay, speaking of things that are absolutely the worst, welcome back to Cage Match, colon, a roundabout way of meeting Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I'm Sean, here with my co-host. Nick, I'm Nick. And our producer. Peter, hello. And we have three special guests this week. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves and tell us what you do. Ooh. And what you're from. <laughs> well. Yeah, tell us who you are and why. <laughs> don't tell them your name, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to dox the shit out of everyone. My social security number is... <laughs> yeah. like, Mother's maiden name. <laughs> oh, my greatest fear is great scam. <laughs> our podcast. Isn't it always? <laughs> That'll work for when our generation's blue hairs. So just tell us we're on a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my oh. name is Linda. I, uh, Linda Castro. I am from... Well, we three are from Cage's Kiss, the Nicholas Cage podcast. Yeah, long running. You guys have been around since, what, 2017? Not, not quite. It only feels like you know, 2019. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. that well, makes more fuck. sense. <laughs> 2010, 25. We, yeah, it's, whatever. It's, it all blends. COVID in. happened in there. That Time, counts for 10 plus. Time stopped in 2020. Yeah, haven't we been doing this forever? Like, <laughs> time stopped for me after The Rock. <laughs> that one's Donnie. Um, I'm Adrian. Yeah. No. <laughs> Hello, I am Donnie from Arby's. <laughs> Well, it's better than the boy who blew on Pornhub, which is still going strong, apparently. You well, have to elaborate yeah. on what the fuck that is. Explanations, please. Yeah, yeah. You're right in my cue zone. I got to hear about this. We, uh, we did an episode on the boy in blue. Ooh, the uh, Greasy Bottom Boys. Yes. And I may mm -hmm. have had a few drinks. We bought every disc on Amazon, apparently. Yeah, one of the reasons it cost over $60 on Amazon. <laughs> I, yeah, Sorry. I, I may have had a few drinkies and a few drinky poos and I suddenly came up with the boy who blew and that led to the creation of a fan made the boy who blew Pornhub channel incredible <laughs> which for a while we told people please for love of God don't find us and don't join us but uh, people be people how, how popular is that channel now <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, it's always weird when you pull up Pornhub and you're in a room and like, you know, you're pulling up Pornhub, but then first thing it's like, <laughs> boom, naked lady or dude, whatever. And it's like, oh God, I can't let people see. It's like, no, wait, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, you, The boy who blew. Yeah, the we're not, blew. Uh, yeah I mean, it, it would, it's weird that you're not in a library doing it, but sure. Oh man. <laughs> Public libraries. Benjamin dude. Franklin Gates, what are you doing? I was going to say, did one of your dogs just give a guffaw? That's my, that's Benjamin Franklin Gates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, since we lost that audio, thank you, Allison, for naming my dog. Okay. Ah, <sighs> burglary. Uh, do you think they wear cool crime jackets? I, I assume they were butt naked. Nice. With a black domino mask. You can't steal nothing unless you got the black domino mask. Yeah, you're right. You understand crime. <laughs> crime and criminals. <laughs> and criminals. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Learned everything I know from Swiper. <laughs> no swiping? <laughs> uh, this podcast, we take my dog is... We, we take, take that dog. dog out back. <laughs> yeah. No, he's only a puppy. He didn't shit on the ground yet. So. Uh, we take 64 Nick Cage movies, uh, bracket style, and we're going to decide what the best Cage movie is, as decided by Nick and me, 
and the goalpost moves every episode. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. We are in the round of 32, which gets us to our slick teen. The thirsty two? I don't know. Mm. It's too much work. Mm. That was thirsty. Mm. God, you can really hear the dog drinking on these microphones. Get it, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so color out of space. You know, so we, we've now watched these movies twice for the show. So it's kind of been an interesting experience going through all these and seeing them again. I don't know if you guys have really done a ton of extensive rewatching on any of these movies. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this one we, we watched twice because we did a commentary once and then we did the for real episode. Ooh. And today I just re-listened to our episode being like, OK, what was what do we what do we <laughs> say? Let me, again? let me write down some of my uh, old jokes. Yeah, they're fresh now. We don't know. them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Well, I'm going to save you guys some time. I'm not going to read it to you like I did to these two. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so you've watched these movies a, a fair, fair handful of times, a fistful of cages. Uh, what when rewatching this, like uh, say for this episode, or or just re-listening to your own podcast to catch your own jokes and laugh again? I do do that. Yeah, I know. Uh, do you <laughs> do you find new things about it? Like. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I, I have a really shitty memory when it comes to movies. <laughs> and so it's. Oh, I just have a really shitty memory for reasons. Sandwich reasons. Yeah, take a dump, Ben. Get Sorry, it. Benjamin Franklin Gates <laughs> just took a big. Well, I mean, big for a puppy <laughs> dump on his little puppy pad thing. Yeah, at least so. he's his puppy pad. He did do it. Oh, Is he going to eat it? it. No, eat, it. eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. You guys talk for a minute. I think Ben gave his commentary. That's the national treasure right there. <laughs> you were saying something smarter than us talking about dog shit. I doubt it. <laughs> um, wait, actually, uh, I got a, a reminder a couple days uh, ago that was like, hey, remember this day so many years ago? And it was from when I, I saw this movie in the theater. And I was like, oh, hey, this is a great timing. That's nice. Uh, I, I'm amazed yeah. you've seen it in the theater. I feel like nobody went and actually watched this in the theaters. Yeah, they gave it a crummy release. Like they do that a lot. Yeah. You know, but it but it actually played in the North American box office, which most the cage movies of the 2010s didn't do. They just ship them to Eastern Europe and the United Arab Emirates for some reason. Yeah, they. Yeah, it got in. It, it did get an international theatrical release. It's just it just it didn't get as big a North America release as it should have. Mm. Weird. Yeah. I don't know if that was just because the distribution or Richard Stanley, because he's he's kind of been that way with some of his films. They haven't really gotten a lot of big, big releases. I mean, well, he also hasn't done anything since uh, Island of Dr. Moreau, really. Right. So yeah. he's like your ultimate cult director for that. You know, like it's all, all this stuff, super obscure. Yeah. I don't know if you all were aware of this, but there is in the only format you can get this in because, well, of course, cassette tape there is a audiobook version of the color out of space which is read by richard stanley no freaking way yeah (laughs) you're fucking dog man he's a puppy (laughs) he's a pupper chewing on his uh declaration of independence oh my god (laughs) i really hope so if only I, I did actually try and find like a chewable declaration of independence for him, but well, you just need to get like one of the squeaky newspaper toys and yeah. just write declaration. declaration. He's, he's a dog. <laughs> actually, you don't even it. need to write anything yeah. on it. He's the dog. <laughs> he can't read. That's true. Is that against the law? To to lie to yeah. a dog? I think you can lie to dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think dogs should be allowed to vote. <laughs> you know, it's better than the current system we have. Yeah. But no, um, I've rewatched this a couple times because I love, 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 love horror movies, but even mm-hmm. more so, I really appreciate a lot of uh, Lovecraftian style films because it's its own kind of subgenre. And they can either be done really well or just you're better off not having seen it before. It's really an 85-15 split. It, it really is. Yeah. I remember hearing about this movie coming out about a year before it. It came out and I remember being real excited because this is my favorite Lovecraft story. Um, a lot of Lovecraft is not fun to read, but this one actually read pretty well. Sometimes a little bit racist. <laughs> it was actually Color Out of Space that changed my mind on whether or not Nick Cage was a good actor and gave wow. me the initial idea to do this podcast. I honestly liked him and his character in this and I liked his kind of slow transition, but he's still 
still had that caginess of I'm going to do a really fucking amazing accent with this character. <laughs> I like how like his craziness just involves him just changing every affectation about himself. And if I, if I remember correctly, I think Linda had mentioned it um, when we had watched the movie too. Uh, he based the character voice he did that on his father. Yes, that's that was my theory because he he well in uh, Vampire's Kiss. He said that he based that voice off of his his father, who was a literary professor. And in this, he's talking about how he never wants to be his father. And when he's like pretending to be his father, he uses the same Peter Lowe voice. And I think with a lot of uh, cage films, you can have you you get an appreciation for the aficionado that this man puts behind the word fuck that (laughs) nobody really can top. I mean, True. Pesci kind of comes close to it. It's fun. But Cage just makes it artistic. Deadfall. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Yeah, Deadfall. Yes. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I was really excited for this movie because, I mean, it's it's uh, H.P. Lovecraft done right for once. And you have Richard Stanley. I mean, my God, that if there were ever a director that is like on the same level as cage and the craziness factor, I, you know, it's like a match made in heaven. I mean, it's still a shame that cause he had a trilogy of films planned out and then immediately got canceled after this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had why. like some abuse allegations. Yeah. Who doesn't nowadays? He got canceled. Not, well, the movies yeah. got canceled because he got canceled. Right. They went down together. <laughs> well, if you just change your name, nobody can catch up with you. Yeah. Just constantly. Yeah, I'm, st- I'm Stan Richards, <laughs> not Richard Stanley. Let's go ahead with that trilogy, eh? Yeah, like he did on the Island of Dr. Moreau when he pretended to be an extra on the film. <laughs> That's true. We've lost a lot of good movies, unfortunately, to not mm. even like stuff like that, but just people in general just kind of dro- dropping in headlines. Because I know there was also, mm-hmm. I still really have hope one day we might actually get it, but I know it won't happen. Uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, In the Mountains Madness. Oh, he's he's completely said he's done chasing that dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know, I remember he uh, first said he did when, of all things, he saw the movie Prometheus. And he's like, yeah, I can't do my movie now. This movie kind of did that. And I'm like, please don't say that. Please. <laughs> Prometheus doesn't deserve that. <laughs> No, I this was a this was a really nice movie. It's not even just the director, the cast, the music, which is beautiful in this. Just the color gradation Absolutely. and how things slowly yeah. degrade throughout. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful transition where it wasn't rushed. I'm always astounded every time I watch this movie about just how good it looks on the budget it has. Yeah, like how yeah. beautiful Absolutely. the CG and all of it definitely. is definitely no it's all tasteful because everybody who worked on it was doing films in the 80s you know so like everybody yeah. everybody actually knew what a movie looked like you know? <laughs> they knew how to solve their problems without cgi it's just hmm. yeah well and i love that it's it's not maybe not horror in like the usual like um i don't know like a slasher flick or necessarily a monster flick way but it's just purely unsettling absolutely tension yeah. building and gross yeah. shit yeah the the villain the enemy is always kind of unknown in this one which is a nice change yeah. Yeah. unless you want to say that weird praying mantis is the baddie you don't want a villain with a quotable name like bye bye man turning up in every movie <laughs> why wouldn't you want that every time i mean it is good it's best for marketing yeah. i i Hard to market just a color T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> oh I was my thinking that God. too. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> I, you know, in my art school days, I always thought, how would I adapt this story if I wanted to adapt it into something? Like, how do you how do you make a color scary? And how do you make an how do you depict an unknowable color in a color medium? Magenta. Magenta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The most effective to me was those ice cubes. Like yeah. anytime you saw that where he was yeah. like pouring his whiskey or whatever bourbon, yeah. bourbon enthusiast. Buck Scotch says this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Local <laughs> bourbon drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe saw something. We don't know. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> Tommy Chong. <laughs> Tommy Chong. <laughs> he is in this movie. <laughs> His fucking like little mon- recorded monologue at the end is still so good and oh, creepy. God, so oh, creepy. God, yeah. Yeah, the the sped up slowed down audio 
Yes. Yeah, it makes yeah. me want to get a reel to reel just so I can leave notes. It's just a color, but it burns. I mean, he could be reading Dr. Seuss and still like with those effects, it's the creepiest goddamn thing in the world. Yeah, does anyone, does anyone have it. a child's book with us right now? Like, can we read something and then <laughs> I'll speed up and slow down? It would only be appropriate for you to have a child's book that, in this That's room. true. Yeah. I do not have a children's book. I've already brought up Pornhub on my phone. I'm not allowed to touch children's books for 12 hours. They'll put you on That's a true. list if you yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, that next knock is Chris Hansen. <laughs> I have Charlie the Choo Choo. Mm. And if you're familiar with that, that is not essentially a child's book, but it kind of is. Does it read like an old uh, Thomas the Tank Engine story where they just brick up a train in a abandoned tunnel to make him watch forever? <laughs> kind of, yes. Oh, okay. And if you look at the cover, there's kids that look like they're having a good time, but they're actually screaming. Oh, perfect. <laughs> this is something that was made off of, um, I think it was the Dark Tower series. Yeah, yeah. Nick Cage is the gunslinger. Oh, I want this. Oh, God. Oh, man. That would have been so beautiful. What? You don't want to keep Matthew McConaughey? We don't. (laughs) He could still be the man in black. No, Nick Nick Cage would be a great gunslinger. It would be a great Roland. I mean, I I love Idris Elba, but I mean, he's hard to beat Nicolas Cage. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, we saw it in Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, Spirit of Vengeance. Vengeance. (laughs) Vengeance. Me and me is Eastern Europe, the country. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate. This was a really surprising movie. I was really glad yeah. that it wasn't one of those recipes for disaster. And it was something that kind of in a funny way, I felt people started to take Cage a little seriously with it. And that kind of because you had like this then what we had pig after and there are people like, oh, my God, he's not actually full on crazy all the time. He actually can do stuff. No, this is like. Right, kind of when we're getting into what we call like the cage sans where he has his mm. third or fourth act of his career, probably fourth, because mm-hmm. the third would be the tax of it, the tax years. Yeah. yeah. And now we're in his final stages. I think we're like in fifth now with like dream yeah. scenario and I hate a five act. We're nearing his final form. Oh, we'll get a sixth act. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, prestige television. Right. <laughs> I don't, do, you, do you think there'll be there'll be another trash fire in between then and now? Do you think there'll be another kill chain? Yep. Oh, of course. I mean, statistically speaking. Well, we do have that new uh, horror movie he's supposed to be a part of, too, coming out. Oh, Long Legs. Also, The Surfer, whatever that is, that's not going to be great. Oh, come on. That sounds awesome. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Surfer looks good. I don't know Long anything about it. bad. Oh, but yeah, I, I feel like this is it's a beautiful movie. It's really unsettling and um, strong acting, especially from the kids like uh, as like Jack. I mean, he's so young. He he's like, I don't know. I feel like it's always a grab bag with kids like who knows, you know, how they're how well they're going to do. Yeah. Most of the time it's going to be awful. Right. You know? Yeah. Because yeah, they're kids and they mm. suck. <laughs> yeah, they're bad. <laughs> Don't know how to act. Kids, bad. Cops, bad. Yeah, okay. Nicholas Cage, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got we got we got our bearings. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's that's our first t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Kids, bad. Cops, bad. Nicholas Cage, good. Yeah. Yeah, we do need some merch. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm Thin still Cage saying line. Garland Green did nothing wrong. Perfect cage match. Yeah. Garland Green 2024. <laughs> yeah. Garland Green did nothing wrong. <laughs> Except for when he's a lieutenant, then he's bad. It's in the title, people. Come on. <laughs> bad lieutenant, port of call. Uh, what? New Orleans. New, uh, New Orleans has kind of a similar arc to Vampire's Kiss in terms of how over the top he gets by the end. Don't transition to Vampire's Kiss yet. <laughs> and don't put those two movies in the same sentence. One of them is pure gold and the other one is. I do miss Iguana Vision. <laughs> <laughs> you get that movie's name out God. your mouth. <laughs> Oh, dear God. Uh, I'm a big Abel Ferreira fan, so damn you to hell. Why was his soul a black guy? <laughs> it's like the reverse Darth Vader, I guess. <laughs> um, no, I do love this movie, and I do love that it's, it is it is like a little ridiculous as well. I mean, they have like, I mean, he's milking alpacas. <laughs> Gotta get it hot from the teat. Drinks it straight from, <laughs> from the teat. From the boob. From the, yes. yeah, the boob. <laughs> <laughs> 
one of the great things about this though is Cage has done so many movies with the family shit just sort of shoehorned in there because he wants to have dad moments, dad kid moments, and in this one he's a dad who becomes unhinged and says hurtful shit to his kids. It's such a plus. It's so <laughs> real, just like mom and dad. <laughs> I bet Weston was watching this like too close, man. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Weston. It's okay, Weston. <laughs> You're the voodoo child. <laughs> Why can't it be more like your brother, Jorel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which one is the like bodyguard looking one and which one is not? <laughs> Weston's the one that Sean made fun of for being fat. Oh, okay. Weston is who I was thinking yeah. of too then. <laughs> yeah, he's the fat metal kid. Yeah. This, this, is, this is kind of like uh, Exorcist 3 for me, where it's like when you've seen it and you know that scene that comes up eventually with the nurse in the hallway and the shears, you know oh, it's yeah. coming. It's still creepy. I still get the same vibes in this when you have the wife when she's just losing it and at the cutting board. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, uh, I can't watch that scene. Going and going. <laughs> I forgot the series of events towards the end uh, when shit's going off. He kills the mom son monster yeah. goes down has a drink with his family watches some tv gets shot in the yeah. back by the sheriff by the sheriff but comes back to life to try and kill uh howard to kill ward ward yeah is his name yeah. howard howard yeah. howard. Yeah. howard i ward. never knew yeah yeah howard phillips i think his full name in the credits was ward phillips you mean howard phillips yeah yeah that made me confused <laughs> Well, his name is supposed to be Howard Phillips after I get, I get it. Lovecraft. Because you read the book. I didn't read the book. <laughs> no, he's not in the book. I mean, that it, is it's, his character's it's name. It's given up sometime in the yeah. movie. I don't remember when. I do but. love how they made, uh, they named the one black character um, after the very famous racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then had him live. Buck tradition. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah. Fuck racists and cops. Eh, there's an overlap. That Venn diagram's about the same. Yeah. You're, you're saying the same thing, Peter. <laughs> well, he thought he was an English gentleman. He was Elliot Roger in 1930, you know. Even for his time, though, other racists were like, mm, dude, you're making us look bad. <laughs> reading somebody's letters posthumously seems like reading somebody's text messages like after they die. And that that's something I don't need. Yeah. I don't need Sean to know what I say to you about him and vice versa. <laughs> don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> I won't tell. Most of us are content Damn. to let those die with us, but then you get like H.L. Mencken's who say, no, no, 60 years after I die, unearth these, so my opinion, <laughs> the, the, my public opinion will just die, and everybody will realize I was a piece of crap. I'm pretty sure that, like, my recorded cause of death will be swallowing my phone. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be like, oh, fuck, the end is near. Swallow it. Leave yeah. no evidence. Hide the crimes. Yeah. You know the best Just part about... Just straight to the butt. The be- <laughs> Don't put nothing on that cloud. <laughs> the best part about dying is, if everyone finds out, they can't do anything about it. No, I mean, in general, like, I don't know. I, this movie is, it's fun. It's beautifully shot. Like, was there anything yeah. that really was gained from watching it this second time? So I've watched this movie, like, five times now, and I always enjoy it. I don't know that any, there's anything really new I came to with this watching. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's artistically really good, and it's fun, and I love the performances. It suffers a little bit in the dialogue. It just does, I don't know. And Lavinia sucks. It, well, yeah, she fucked. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want to talk about her stupid ass wickedness again or Alexandrian. That would be wrong. Was it Alexandrian? Nope. No, it was Wiccan. Well, when we meet her, she goes zero to bitch in like 10 seconds. It's amazing. Yeah, you yeah, immediately know she sucks. Yeah. Well, this is why she summoned these demons. And come on. <laughs> yeah, it's all her fault. <laughs> it really it is her fault. <laughs> yeah, really? she's the worst. Oh, I got a big question. Linda, did you cover this movie in Bed Knobs and Broom Bed and Broom uh, No, um, we did cover. Well, we came on to Cage's Kiss to do uh, to cover. Oh, God. Season of the Witch. Oh, well, okay. oh, God. <laughs> why did you remind me of that fucking thing? God oh, we're going to definitely it. watch oh. that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh god it'll make your dick hurt you need a doctor at that movie oh that's a stellar review <laughs> um there were choices made in that movie yeah. <laughs> you have some brilliant actors with like natural like european accents and being forced to give these weird like 
Boston accents. That's it's, the only accent Nick Cage can do. Yeah. He does a perfect Boston accent. Yeah. I mean, Cage tries for the accent and like, I think it lasts for maybe five minutes. That sounds right. <laughs> so- Incredible. That's how long I do accents in, in my D&D games. <laughs> awesome. Let's go Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of racists. <laughs> so what's the deal with the like what's the deal I, with I racists? This, <laughs> what's, what's the, the deal? deal with racists? <laughs> but with the Deathly Hallows symbol all over this movie. I mean it's like it, in Lavinia's hair, she's got a like a hair clip that's like the Deathly Hallows. You got the triangle with the the line going down the middle. And then there's the attic window where um the mom works it's same thing uh jk yeah. rowling stole everything she's ever made <laughs> i don't think she stole it from this movie no but, but i mean I, that symbol is yeah. not wholly this movie original. transcends time i like how within the lore of lovecraft the lovecraft mythos there is the necronomicon it is Muscatonic Muscatonic university there's one copy of it it's there and she's just got like off the bookshelf. Yeah, like uh, a paperback version. Paperback version. version of it. <laughs> yeah. Which they do make. I saw it wasn't made yeah. with people's skin. Like, come on. I have sold one of those. Well, there, yeah, there, there's the there's the book you'll find in the stores that calls itself the yes, Necronomicon. I've sold it at Barn- when I worked at Barnes and Noble. Yeah, that's where I go for all of my <laughs> Satan. Honestly, that would be really that would be really fun to go to a library and say you want to check out the Necronomicon. They give you a book bound in human flesh written in blood. <laughs> I want the audio tapes in ancient Sumerian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted the paperback version. Oh, <laughs> no. That one's just made of foreskin. Where do you guys put this movie on the grid? Good, yeah. bad, bad, good, good, bad, bad, good, good, good bad. Pretty high. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. this was one of those like rare oasises in the cage desert, you know, like we, we I think we all breathed a sigh of relief when we got to it. Yeah. This for me was kind of like, because in our show, I always read the most wonderful reviews people have for these films. <laughs> and they always tend to say, no matter how bad this movie sucked, they always compare it to The Rock. That is their standard <laughs> of greatness. Weird, and that's weird kind choice. of where I'm at with this. I yes. know. It's like, this is, this is The Rock for me, for those people. It's like, <clears throat> this was my, I loved this with Cage. It was perfect with him. He was wonderful in it. And I didn't feel like wanting to stab my eyes out after I saw it. Like Wicker Man. Hmm, sorry. <laughs> I mean, at least in Wicker Man, he did kick someone. And oh, that he was kicks kind of fun. lots of people. <laughs> he kicked Lily Sobieski <laughs> in the tummy. <laughs> tum tum. Right in the tum tum, Zeke. On, on our show, we, we got an, we got an animated intro and it has it has uh, my animation of, of Cage punching Sister Beach from for the Wicker Man. Uh, I love Beautiful. that still Boy. that and Jessica that and Jessica Beale blowing up are my two just favorite things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to have a good time, find uh find our next episode and just listen to Peter lose his Oh my shit. god. Yeah, I could not handle that episode. We really hit a, a certain pocket that tickled me. <laughs> Uh, tickling your pocket. You guys are all right. <laughs> what do you guys think on this movie at this point? I still love it. I think I think there are parts of it that are a little overlong. I think the middle kind of takes a while, but by and large, I still thoroughly enjoy this film. Yeah, I think it's still a lot of fun. It's uh, kind of a niche watch. Uh, I don't think I could just throw it on any time, but I enjoy it when I watch it. So when I'm ready for it, I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. Terrific performance by Nick. Um, He just like gets some really good deliveries. There's some really, I don't know, just weird shit happening. Like talking about milking alpacas again. Alpaca boobs (laughs) dunking tomatoes into the trash can. Oh man. Yeah. (laughs) What is that smell? (laughs) (laughs) You know the cancer smell, you know, you know that better than anybody. Yeah. What a dick comment. Yeah. (laughs) Are you right? Like what an asshole! <laughs> you, you know my my cancerous wife. You know that smell. <laughs> Remember how bad your boob smelled? <laughs> oh, brother! <laughs> oh, he's a leg man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I do still love that line <laughs> so about like <laughs> if she had no legs, he could just put her in his carry on luggage and a take bit her kinky, wherever. But. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't 
don't know. I thought I thought that part was kind of sweet. Like he's he's like just letting her know like she of course she had a, a mastectomy must have. And now he's like, hey, I'm always going to love you. Yeah, it's definitely one of those scenes and one of those dialogues where you do actually get some of his uh, pre coloring personality and, you know, what makes that family kind of work like that's uh, the wife's cancer and the grandpa's goggles are the two things where I'm like, there had to be more to this at one point because with, especially with the cancer, because we're getting to body horror later and they don't really like, you know, she feels "Eh," about her body because of the surgery, but they never really do anything with that. Oh man. Do you think there were like even more boob analogies and like metaphors, (laughs) like with the milking alpacas, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) big alpaca blob monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why he got the alpacas because he needed some tits, right? <laughs> it all makes sense now. Seriously, how great would that have been if he did that? If he had the alpaca monster, he's like, okay, son, go in there and milk it. <laughs> what if the mom had gotten merged with the alpacas and then mom could have had thousands of nipples? She'd still be alive. Yeah. He wouldn't have shot her. Right? Shot her yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're still my golden llama. (laughs) (laughs) The wife with a thousand young. (laughs) Oh, God. No, but I I do love that they show that they're very much in love. They're still horny for each other. And um, it seems like a a somewhat happy family. And I mean, they seem pretty cool with having Ezra squatting on their their farm. Yeah, except Lavinia, who who repeatedly uh, sucks. True. (laughs) Yeah, she's the yeah. worst. I don't she know. Sucks. Yeah. Jack's cool. Lavinia and the just like a stoner. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lavinia blows. I mean, if you have Tommy Chong living on your farm, yeah, you're going to smoke pot with him. I yeah. mean, like, <laughs> he's got the fucking dankest <laughs> shit. Come on, man. Yeah, he's got the good shit. Yeah. You yeah. want to come over for coffee? <laughs> You know, I don't even think they hired him for this movie. He just moved out there uh, after he got out of jail. Yeah. He's just living on that land and they were filming. Yes. <laughs> like, Tommy, just say some weird they shit when you're high. We're going to record you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, man. <laughs> what do you want to name Dave's that cat? Not here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me squat on your land, man. Hey, whatever you do, don't Google my name, okay? <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we usually put this up on... Uh, we we call it a Venn diagram, but it's been pointed out to us that it is very much not a Venn diagram. It it's is much more of a grid. Yeah, a matrix. It, it is quadrants <laughs> of good movie, good cage, bad movie, bad cage, and there within and whatnots. I don't have to explain this. That's why I mean, we already talked weird. about it too. Yeah, but we didn't. <laughs> did we finish it? I mean, you guys didn't say your things. I go good I don't cage, think. good movie. There we go. Good good Nicolas Cage performance. Good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Another one knocked out of the park. Nailed it. We're pros. <laughs> Do we have anything else we want to say about this film before we move on? I think we could talk about it for an entire evening, of but course. I think we've kind of gotten to it. We've milked this llama. We've milked <laughs> Alpacas this. are we, different. We miss milk this alpaca for all it's worth. <laughs> Boobs. Yeah, it's it's a fun film. Uh, and it brought Richard Stanley back to like he he said that Nicolas Cage brought him back to Hollywood and renewed his faith in Hollywood. He was hiding on a mountain in France. Did he do something after this? No, he got canceled after this. Oh, that's right. Right. Because he was yeah. supposed to do the Dunwich. He had, he had planned to do the Dunwich Horror right. and Call mm-hmm. of Cthulhu. Yeah, um, he did. And we won't get those. Yeah. Well, maybe someone else will do them. Poorly. Yeah. Traditionally, probably. that's how it goes. Just do what Lionsgate, Lionsgate did. Take a t- terrible uh, Uli Lamel movie shot in a basement that's just about torture and then just call it H.P. Lovecraft's The Tomb and never explain it. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the same thing with Dagon. It's just you can't really... It's hard. You just make your own interpretation, especially for a monster that in the end it's just kind of you're told is horrific, but nothing really other specific. I mean, we're all in sort of the same area. Do you want to start a Kickstarter? Let's do it. Let's just... Finish the trilogy. <laughs> Fuck it. Well, I don't know shit about anything, and we've managed to do this for forty episodes. So, like, why not? Let's let's go, baby. <laughs> Trust me, I've watched enough poorly made shark films that were made for literally five hundred dollars. And if those can get distribution, follow your dreams. We'll just have to get. 
I mean, all Lovecraft stories are public domain. Hey, and so is Mickey Mouse now. I'm not going to die on that hill yet. They're they're trying some shit. They're trying some chicanery. Yeah, I wouldn't fuck with Disney. They'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so vampires. So vampires cares. Uh, Thirty years in the past, we <laughs> usually find some odd connection between the two movies, and. I like there's a through line to be drawn from Vampire's Kiss to Color Out of Space. Like we wouldn't get this movie or this performance if we didn't get Peter Lowe and didn't get his initial that character. This is the first all out crazy cage performance that we got. Yeah, Peggy Sue got married was sort of the test run, but this is where it really took wing. I mean, he wanted to get a real bat for fuck's sake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had his moments throughout. So Peggy Sue is a good one. Uh, what was the... Why does he love Sean that Penn voice one? so much? Racing with the Moon. Racing with the Moon. He got to do some of that kind oh, of insanity. God, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you're Birdie right. was some of the insanity in that time, too. Ripping out his own teeth. <laughs> oh, God damn it. So, I mean, he he played around with it, but this was the first time that he got to really be like crazy completely unhinged just totally <laughs> fucking yeah. a lunatic yeah. well uh, and also fucking with the random people on the new york streets it's it's a non-union movie so, yes. so they're shooting without permits with people who don't know they're in a movie and you can really tell yeah. when people look at some of those scenes as he's like dragging the stake around with him yes. <laughs> mimes they were in a movie. god i love those mimes <laughs> i hate those mimes i hate mimes <laughs> those goddamn mimes <laughs> The, <laughs> the domestic violence mimes. <laughs> well, you also get to see that like silent, like the actually German expressionistic um, acting where he like he had the same thing going on for like he had the Nosferatu uh, hands in the attempted murder scene and, and Peggy yep. Sue. Oh, yeah. And now he's just like living his dream with the whole vampire's cast. And Robert <laughs> Bierman, the director, really was into letting him go for it. God bless him. You know, like that was um, it was the best choice he could have made to oh, just to let, let Nicolas just, Cage yeah. just do it. Yeah, yeah. I was fully. thoroughly impressed when he's starting to lose his shit and he like chases uh, Alva through. Oh, like down the stairs uh, before down the stairs when he chases her into the bathroom the first time oh, and he right. just does that standing, just leap onto the desk in loafers. Yeah, you've been doing box jumps. I've been doing box jumps. That ain't easy. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> oh, well, I brought you soup. Yeah. <laughs> just a packet of soup, like dry soup. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love it. <laughs> I've got to say, I've had some really awful, god awful bosses, and this is just triggering as hell. <laughs> that PTSD. Like, like uh, what was that, his excuse? So, oh, I just tried mescaline for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I did too in high school. You know, I, I understand. And he's like, cool, cool. Yeah. Also, fuck you, come into work late. <laughs> yeah, uh, she overshares with her boss. Too much, yeah. like telling him that she did masculine in high school, like when he's at her house being like, oh, well, yeah, OK, I wasn't really sick. It's like, bitch, <laughs> stick to your lie. <laughs> yeah, it's like my boss is going to my boss is crazy and might rape and kill me. We're not going to pay your rent anymore. Go to your job. You need that job. <laughs> and then the next day she comes home. She goes straight to her room, doesn't come out. And her mom's like, come out of your room. Breakfast is ready. I don't know what's wrong with that girl. <laughs> Hey, bitch, fucking eggs. And then immediately it's like, hey, brother, do a murder for me. Murder and he's like, me. I will. <laughs> that's family. Yeah, that's how family works, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to think Donnie would avenge me. I mean, if I got, if it's a Tuesday, sure. Yeah, Tuesdays are usually pretty open. Yeah, just gotta, you know, you don't want it to fuck with your weekend. Do your best to die on a Monday. Yeah, come on, Linda. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want that week off. The dialogue in this movie was fun. Like, it wasn't... Mm. It was insane. I don't know. I, there was so much mm. that kind of bordered on the surreal that I really liked going on I with this. I was drunk and horny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick and I were talking about that earlier. Girl, you know? Yeah, I just love, like, how that's an excuse. It's like, well, you know, I was kind of drunk and I was a little bit horny. You know how you can be. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, shit, yeah, I have been drunk and horny. Mm -hmm. That doesn't excuse it. <laughs> with his therapist. 
We get yeah, we got Elizabeth Ashley as his therapist, and she and later Elizabeth Ashley as his hallucinated therapist, which is even better. How many times have you guys watched this film? Oh, we watched it a lot getting ready to, to record this when we when we did. We we went through it a lot. And the movie, the movie in, in terms of how it all hangs together is kind of a train wreck, but you still kind of delight in what in what you wound up with, you know. <laughs> I remember I rewatched and uh we were doing the uh Renfield episode. Weird because he's not a vampire in this movie. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean he says it a lot. I don't know. I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. <laughs> there was a there was some confusion the last time we recorded this as to whether or not he was. Speaking of confusion, because you are with Cage now, um, I have to ask this, though it may not be something you may remember. Linda, you know what I'm gonna huh? talk about, right? Nope. <laughs> right. The Are you talking about pasties? No, about the confusion as to the actor who played the main in oh. Rockula. Yeah, Rockula. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> have you seen that. the movie Rockula? <laughs> no. no. The dude is a dead ringer for Nicolas Cage. Huh. He is. Yeah, for the longest is. time, we thought Nicolas Cage was in the film Rockula. It is about <laughs> a vampire who rocks, who runs a nightclub that rocks out. He does Hell 90s yeah. style rap, like white guy rap. Oh, he's a new metal. He does rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, this movie it has, has a amazing Tony Basil. Things. That's awesome. It has um, um, Thomas Dolby. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. But, um, but he really is a vampire, but he's also the DJ. <laughs> As all good vampires are. Yeah. It'll, it'll change your life. No, this is a, this is a good descent into madness movie. I really it, like that. And I wasn't expecting that. Cause I remember, I remember when I was a kid um, in a, in a video store, I think we had rented this long, long back and just a little bit stuck with me. And I remember being bored as hell with this. Cause I'm like, I wanted a horror movie. This is not a horror movie. And <laughs> rewatching it as an adult and watching it again and again and again, it's just, I, it made me appreciate how well Cage can really do descents like that. Yeah. Cause it's just some, some actors and actresses don't really grasp that, but he just, he goes for it. Yeah. And you can really see that. The first time I watched this movie was on an airplane. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Terrible oh way to watch boy. it. Yeah. Amazing yeah. I had the watch. aisle seat and I like turned it on and I was like, well, I got to watch this so we can uh, record when I get back from this trip. <laughs> And it starts going, I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe this isn't right. And then it starts going like just boobs <laughs> all over. And I was like, fuck, uh, like the uh, flight attendant was coming up and I'm like trying to cover up my laptop so she can't see <laughs> and oh, make man. inferences that I'm obviously whacking off. But then the guy across the aisle leans over and he's like, I love this movie. <laughs> and he's like watching it on my laptop nice. too. And it's like, okay. That's somehow weird. Hey, he was lucky when people are watching shit. I can see it on their plane. It's goddamn kids shit oh, that I've never terrible. heard of. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I want to slap the tablet on the kid's hand and like, you damn Gen Z kids. You don't know what you want. <laughs> watch vampires kiss. <laughs> Why can't you watch something wholesome? That's yeah. Right. Like vampires kiss with Jennifer Beals and, and pasties. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, watching things on a plane, me and my sister were on our way to our, our grandfather's funeral on a plane, and I brought a portable DVD player, and me and her were going to share earbuds, and we were going to watch House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, yeah. And I hadn't plugged in the earphones yet, and I forgot there was animation on the menus, like they do little Oh, skit. yeah, there is. <laughs> and as it started up, everyone on the plane heard, well, shit the bed. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck. Awesome. <laughs> so, Nick, going back to this film, did you, like, pick up on any new subtext or things we missed the first time around? I don't know if I picked up anything new. It was... It's just incredible to me that every second that Nicolas Cage is on screen, which is like the whole movie, yeah. is a banger. Every line. like every yeah. delivery yeah. rules. The writing is just incredible. Uh, like this is the most memed up with him as the priest at the mm -hmm. beginning of Face Off. Yep. Yeah. And Wicker Man. On Wicker yeah. Man. 
that this is where we got the name for our podcast i mean yeah it's a fucking it's such a fun movie and i i really thoroughly enjoyed it more this time than the first time having kind of knowing where it was going how it all connected to my first time watching it, i'm like what the fuck is this it's so just completely unhinged and doesn't make any sense and i was watching it today and it's starting to you know get a little weird it's still early on i just thought what are the symptoms of rabies and I looked them up, yeah. and they're all there. I'm like, oh, that's what this movie is. He just got bat bit. He just got bat bit, and it has rabies. And He got bat bit, and a little bit horny. Yeah. Listen, we all get a little drunk and a little horny. <laughs> and and bat bats. bit. Yeah. I was fighting the bat, and I got a little horny. But that's like put this whole thing in a weird, like in a new perspective. I'm like, oh, this movie isn't just crazy, unhinged, doesn't make any sense. There's a mm, full no. through line and it makes perfect sense. And it's actually kind of a sedate film when you look at it like that. Just a man in a health crisis. Yeah. I feel like there's also something to be said in there about like his his relationship with women. Yeah. And like he just cannot stand the thought of being um, like rejected by a woman. So he goes through them like tissues. Ew. He even has his <laughs> literal uh, dream woman, and he ends up calling her a cunt in like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cherry on top. I love that. It's like even even in your even in your mind, even in your fever dream, you fail. Yeah. She even likes Vivaldi. Yeah. Ugh, he likes Vivaldi. <laughs> and Asian food. It's so refreshing. <laughs> Japanese food is very refreshing. <laughs> And eating cockroaches is very refreshing. Yeah. Even when they're stink bugs. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Water bugs. Water, water bugs. bugs. I got called out for that one last time. Yeah. yeah. What's Ooh. the difference? Between a stink bug and a water bug? No, a water bug and a roach. I can't remember. The type of bug it is. The amount of water inside of its body. Science. <laughs> So you don't know is what you're saying. Correct. I don't need to know. You just know I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We're not fact checking you in any real way. Well, you know, originally it was supposed to be a raw egg and he was like, I just don't think that would give the, the same punch. And so he's the one who made the decision to eat. A I, I want to eat a rope. bug. Yeah. <laughs> and there were two takes. Oh God. And the way he like choose it. And oh, I mean, this is my opinions are pretty uh clear i think a lot in this this movie is fucking incredible and i struggle to think that there's a movie that i'm going to take further than this i mean we'll have to see obviously that's the whole point of this show but uh <laughs> his commitment to every moment on yeah. screen it it's he's fucking in yeah. it this movie grew on it's electrifying so it's it's He's got just magnetism that I can't stop watching. It's one. I mean, it's so rare, but it's a it's a movie that I don't look at my phone while I'm watching it. Yeah, yeah. it's just something I can't miss. Yeah, I think about that fucking dumbass scene when he shoots himself in the mouth and then just goes. <laughs> that would have actually killed somebody. <laughs> oh yeah, a blank. Yes. A blank would actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He would yeah, the wadding. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, oh, yeah, the wad. The wads always get. Mm. That's how it gets you in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when somebody shoots a wad in your mouth at that velocity, <laughs> it is science. Fatal. <laughs> I love that they drugged a pigeon. Oh, yeah. And let him catch a drugged yeah. pigeon without telling oh, him that God. they had drugged it. <laughs> they just like go get a pigeon. <laughs> yeah. How go. long do you think it was out there before they're just like fucking drug a pigeon and just <laughs> just kick it out there? Just put it on a balloon. <sighs> you think he actually ate that pigeon? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Method actor. Yeah. <laughs> you were filming. <laughs> I do like when he goes to buy when he goes to buy the vampire teeth and he doesn't have any cash, but you can see his Amex in the wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was eighty eight. Maybe they didn't want to take card. Fair. Those cheapies are so fucking weak, though. <laughs> They're so good. They were perfect yeah. for the movie, though. <laughs> and then he and then he bites uh, Larry Cohen's daughter. Is that right? <laughs> oh yeah, and that's who that was. Yeah, no, all no every every woman who shows up in this movie is actually like like significant. You know, like you get Maria Conchita Alonso, you get Cassie Lemons, the director, mm -hmm. and you get fucking Jennifer Beals, the flash dance, and Elizabeth Ashley, who was in all those Burt Reynolds movies. Well, and then Amy Stiller was the one chatting with uh, David Hyde Pierce in the bar in that one scene, too. Oh, yeah. oh, I forgot. I missed David Hyde Pierce on yeah. this watch. He does uh, have a great he's mustache. He's there. <laughs> yeah. Good stash. There's a cameo from one of Cage's brothers, too. 
Yeah, yeah. And the did you get that scene? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, you know, I heard that Cage actually wasn't happy with how it ended up. Um, he was, I guess he was really quote unquote hurt by seeing himself on the cover with a cape and the fangs, because he said, like, I never wore a cape. <laughs> and I guess he just got upset with how they kind of I mean but like he's still kind of that way with like things they use his face for because with the uh, he was doing yeah. an interview recently and they talked to him about like finally getting to see himself as Superman the Flash and he, all he could talk about was how mm-hmm. they had me come in and ask me to do some stuff but none of that stuff was on the screen so I don't know what they did probably something with AI well I mean they did do that yeah <laughs> But, they didn't do anything with his real work. I know, but he has a, a like flat face yeah. that just goes. <laughs> so I'm actually surprised to hear that. Like they brought him in at all. I wouldn't have. We watched the whole two and a half hours for that. Worth it. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I don't know. As far as deep, not to get off topic, because we never do that. Uh, as far as DC movies go, that one was actually way better than I anticipated. Like I put off watching The Flash for a really long time. I haven't watched it really. I could not. And they put off what releasing it. So I know. think it's because yeah. Zack Snyder just raped us too hard and too often with the DC movies that like I don't know, it's just it, they really low lowered the bar. <laughs> and so you see something that's not terrible and it's not like Yeah. Oh, your mother's name is Martha. <laughs> Uh, it's box. Like, wow, people went fucking insane for Aquaman and I finally watched him like this movie is nothing oh, yeah. Aquaman sucks. I haven't watched it Julie Andrews is in it that's like the one interesting thing about that movie oh. she's the voice of the Hydra mm. and Amber Turd oh. <laughs> you love Amber Turd I love that <laughs> say what you want about Amber Heard I look great with her tits that's true yeah <laughs> Go go look at uh, Peter's artwork from for Drive, uh, Angry. For Drive Angry. It's yeah. astounding. <laughs> Your best work. <laughs> that is probably my best work. <laughs> Piece of resistance. Yeah. Wasn't I mean speaking of of Amber Heard, wasn't I, I could be totally wrong, but wasn't wasn't Jack uh from Color Out of Space, like didn't he play her son in something? He shit the bed once too. Good <laughs> <laughs> night, folks. That's the best joke we're gonna get tonight. <laughs> So uh, in the matrix of good, bad, bad, good, bad, good, good, bad, uh, where would you put Nick Cage and this film? The upper 25%. Uh, I, I, I consider it an interesting kind of a misfire. Um, I appreciate the fact that it was ambitious and that a lot of it does land. Um, mm-hmm. And I like director Robert Bierman and what, what he tries to do with his movies, you know. So, you know, on, on the whole, you know, like solidly C plus, B minus. I'd say something like good, bad, because it's it's. Like meme the movie. Uh, I I feel like that's a little harsh. That's but I mean like that's an opinion. <laughs> I, I I feel like your opinion sucks. Uh, no, uh, it's gonna be a primal thing all over again. <laughs> no, it's uh, well you admitted to loving primal earlier today. So Ooh. you did. Oh, oh Sean. <laughs> we were talking about oh. Gendy Tar- Tartakovsky's, Tartakovsky's primal, primal. but oh, uh, <laughs> different. <laughs> but the words "I love primal" came out of his mouth. Did you record it? <laughs> Yes, from the wire that I always wear. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. Commander Data and a CGI Panther. It's a movie, everybody. <laughs> it was so good. No, I, yes, I see your statement and I understand, but it's like the memes came after. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unbearable weight, I feel like, is more of the, oh, it's a he's a meme, make a movie. No, it was. Yeah, that's I was super, super disappointed in that movie. Oh, my God. But Vampire's Kiss definitely like it earned all of that attention with how ridiculous and absurd and over the top and just completely unrestrained the performance is. And very uh very rarely do i get to see something where you just give somebody control or like ownership of a a character like that and yeah. they just make bold choices choices that could have landed him in like the unemployment line going forward and he just committed to everyone yeah like this performance was a risk and this movie was a risk and yeah. it's something that uh I think really had an effect on his career. Obviously it got him moonstruck. It, mm-hmm. 
has an effect on film, I think. I don't know if it's a good effect and I'm not going to pull out the yarn, but like, I know he just wanted to do this one for just to like rebel against Moonstruck and his, yeah, his performance. He, want, he didn't in want that. to get typecast as a romantic yeah. lead. Yeah. And he didn't, which, you know, <laughs> which I applaud, you know, because like that, that would have, that would have been safe if he just stuck with well, that. It's you know? one thing I really appreciate about appreciate about Nicolas Cage in general is that he is he really loves acting and he's just playing and he's just you could tell he's having fun and he's passionate about what he's doing. And I mean, you know, lo- love him or hate him. He's he's doing what he loves and he's got a lot of passion for it. Very true. I would say for me, I don't know when we started the good, bad, bad, good uh, in season one. It was like episode 10, 12. So I don't know like if we have a recording of where I thought this would be originally, which I think would have put, probably put him good movie bad. But Going back, rewatching it, knowing the through line and actually being able to see like, oh, the script isn't just completely batshit bananas. Like there is a method to it. There is a reason for like his character, the hatred of women, as well as going insane. Rabies, because rabies, like it all makes sense. And I'm like, this movie's so much. There's so much more here than I ever would have thought initially. And uh, I'm going to up that to good, good. I think it's a great film. Definitely up there. Absolutely. In his, uh, in his filmography. This is going to be a hard one to beat. Yeah, I'm with you. Just this, it's this so much fun to watch every time. On, on second watch for me, I like this way more. I thought it was way more interesting. I like the music even. Yeah. Which the first time I watched it, I was like, the mm-hmm. fuck is this? And the second time watching it, I was like, <laughs> okay, this kind of fucking works for this thing. Well, and like <laughs> the unreliable narrator, and it gets so much more like, yeah. absurd through the movie. Like when he just calling his therapist after he does the murder and he's trying to like get her to like make an appointment earlier. And as soon as she hangs up the phone, there's like that beefcake there. He's the beefcake is there before. (laughs) Was he? Yeah. The beefcake. No, she's, she's hot. The beefcake was there. (laughs) She's getting it in. (laughs) Just the, the back and forth uh, in in the big ending scene there where he's on the street with a blood (laughs) goatee talking to the, the corner of a building. And then, and then he's looking pristine with perfect hair in Elizabeth Ashley's office still holding the piece of wood that yeah. he's trying to stake himself with. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that was very artful. I, I uh I, Would I you guess. stop worrying and just get on with your big romance? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it you're right. I, I think that there's there's something deeper in it to be found in the movie. And I, I think that it was unfortunate that at that time they had to market it and like promote it as something kind of silly and schlocky. Yeah. Marketing's its own thing. And mm. uh, I don't know if any of you guys work in marketing, but I'm, I'm still going to say, yeah, fuck those guys. Uh, <laughs> Cause they resemble yeah, that. <laughs> so do I, I resemble you. <laughs> Not so without the beard. It's That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, marketing got us to watch jujitsu. So which I maintain is a <laughs> awesome piece of trash. Hmm. Oh, I don't. It's got oh, Crab Man in it. It's got that awesome oh. like first person fight scene. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. CGI shuriken just shooting at your face. Oh man, yeah, all the CGI bullet holes and stuff. It's like, why is this movie is so bad? And, and then the comic book transitions yeah. for some reason. I <laughs> love it. Yeah. That's yeah. that's my primal. <laughs> you guys, you guys out there, you're nerds. You're gonna love this. Look, comic book. See? Comic book equals good. That was our episode <laughs> one. It was yeah. face off versus that. <laughs> oh my Astounding. God. Well that that's man, no contest. Gee whiz. <laughs> yeah, right. Jujitsu wins. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, obviously. <laughs> With the predator pants. <laughs> okay, Oof. how many hours can the jujitsu alien suck on a peach for? Mm. Oh my. Mm. I don't think he had an actual mouth, so not many. I mean, you don't need a mouth to peach. Yeah, I think any orifice would do. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it's just butts and butts. Yeah, prison pocket. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yes, it's so exactly. alien ass to ask. Gotcha. Yeah, you got it. You guys understand. <laughs> We've been to prison, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in terms of these two films, uh, I would like to know your guys' opinion. Uh, 
And in terms of where these are going to score in the end, your opinions do not matter. Ultimately, but- yeah, you your vote <laughs> doesn't count, but we do want to yeah, hear it. Just anyway. like the Electoral College. Yeah. Um, what where would you which one of these movies would you put forward in the bracket? Personally, I would say Color Out of Space, although oh. I, I think they're both important historically uh, in the cage timeline. They're both recommendable for different reasons. I think that's yeah. easy to say. Um, yeah. Um, you know, Vampire's Kiss, very iconic movie, very important movie. It's a fun movie. I would go with Color Out of Space. That's me. That's it's almost unfair to have to choose between those two because they really do pull a lot of punches in both their categories. But that's the whole point of our show. I, it only gets harder. I know, kind of like I me. Know. <laughs> only if there's a bat around. Yeah, I was drunk and also horny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah honestly it's yeah sensual. being being drunk and horny and feeling kind of <laughs> sensual myself um i'm gonna say color out of space not because the majority so far but because all around Coward. like you're looking at you're looking at the soundtrack you're looking at the filmmaking of the whole thing all of it was just such a beautifully put together thing and it made such a beautifully horrific beast that i just i i love it and at the time when we watched in order the vampires kiss and everything else that was a breath of fresh air but honestly even though both films stay with me color out of space held a lot more in my mind and it kind of sticks around more there versus vampires kiss it's just it just comes down to cohesion at the end of the day yeah um, yeah um which is but which is why i i call uh, vampires kiss an interesting failure they got a lot of good themes in there and they're saying a lot of good things with them yeah. It's it's just some of them some of them kind of trail off. Though if I had seen Jennifer Beals' uh, nipples, it may have been a different <laughs> yeah, choice. Yeah, the, the pasties were bad. <laughs> yeah. Like don't just hide them. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, like if you don't yeah. want to show any <laughs> boob, that's like, fine, but like just don't <laughs> Are they just find her body double from Flashdance. Hello, no brainer. <laughs> or like cut the 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 pasties smaller, not have them be like I mean, obviously, he wasn't into her anyway, right? Like, that was the yogurt situation, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, are they pasties or are they like that old, like, oh, strapless no bra? That's what I could thought. be, yeah. But I mean, either so, way. Yeah. You make some very salient points about Nipples. all of that. Well, I mean, about soundtrack, cinematography, all that. Um, Nipples. Nick. But, oh, no, I'm, I'm still solidly, like... If I had to show one of these movies to somebody at any point, I know I could get a consistent reaction from Vampire's Kiss that I wouldn't necessarily get every time from Color Out of Space. Mm. And I feel like in my own head experiment with how I approach this, that's uh that's got a lot more to me and i mean also like i said there's not a moment that nicholas cage is on screen that i'm not just completely taken for a ride in this movie it just offers so much performance and there's no lavinia like when i say <laughs> we're, we're trying to find nicholas cage's best movie that best is in heavy air quotes because i just want to know what the most entertaining Nicolas Cage is and it's def- Vampire's Kiss is definitely up there. So I'm going to say Vampire's Kiss. Excellent. Hey, if it's just a performance, Deadfall wins them all, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're putting it into the bracket. You, you can scratch your head till the end of days on that one. <laughs> I definitely see where you guys are coming from and that that's that's a really good argument. Yeah, and you know, everybody takes like their own approach to what this is like we could literally reorganize the bracket and have different winners yeah oh every time yeah Yeah. so this is i mean we're we're certainly not disagreeing with you about uh color out of space being a terrific movie i mean i love that film it's again the reason i wanted to start this in terms of having to rewatch something, I would definitely say color out of space but but you're right though if you're if you're approaching somebody who's like what's nick cage all about um like i don't get it then you're gonna show them vampires for Kiss. sure 100 i would hope that. that you do yeah i'm gonna show them that episode of community 
All, all the uh, online. Oh, good choice. No, no. All the online reviewers seem to think that his very best work was Con Air and Gone in sixty seconds. Gone in sixty seconds yeah. can suck it. Gone in sixty seconds somehow. Everybody, <laughs> have you guys ever had a movie that 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 you never liked that you hated every time you watched it? Yet you kept going back to it, just trying to bang your head against it, being like, "Okay, what's in here? What do people see? Why?" I had to do an illustration for um, The Life Aquatic, and I've always Ugh. hated that director. Uh, me too. And like, I watched Fuck him. I, I watched oh. the movie. I was like, fell asleep in five minutes. Had to watch it again the next day. Fell asleep in five minutes. Third time I watched it, got 10 minutes into it, got a chuckle out of me. And now it's one of my favorite movies. So it's kind of like a weird, like, <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome situation. <laughs> we need a soundboard button for. I was a little drunk and a little horny just to play repeatedly during that episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can we can we mod this? <laughs> Probably. Um, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you guys for being here. Um, do you guys want to just thank give you. a little shout out to your shows? Yeah. What do you got to pitch? Yeah. So we're part of Cage's Kiss. We uh, try to glean whatever kernels of wisdom we can from his movies and his life. Um. And uh, we've just uh, we've been doing it forever, and I don't remember a time before it. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> also, uh, Donnie and I enjoy uh, voice acting on the side, and uh, I've I have another little fun podcast about witches and stories and history called uh, Bedknobs and Broom Flicks. And I'm kind of uh, looking forward to an episode I have coming up on. Um cinema recall in his podcast we're gonna be talking about of all things because people couldn't decide to choose jaws four for some reason uh we're gonna talk about jfk because why not (laughs) jaws four jfk same thing i mean it really (laughs) is honestly just the zabruder films no they're not just watching (laughs) zabruder films (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey this comedy podcast is about to really turn it up a notch yeah don't listen to our 9-11 episode either <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> that'll get you canceled <laughs> just listening to that gets people canceled <laughs> saying 9-11 is your favorite holiday gets you canceled <laughs> yeah I mean if you're gonna make up holidays just fucking <laughs> uh, yeah and that uh, like Linda said doing voice acting stuff and I am also getting geared up to do another full month of shark movie reviews so that's gonna be interesting once we get that ball rolling do you just do that during shark month no i'm trying to time it with it if i can but i i intermittently do these like every two to three months i will Mm. and this is this is a search to go through all the shittiest shark films i can to find some chunks of gold did you talk about that italian zombie movie where the zombie fights a shark (laughs) with zombie shark yes The last time I did this, the best film I got out of it was uh, Bad CGI Sharks. That is an amazing, amazing movie. Oh, that's the title uh, of it. It's called Bad CGI <laughs> Sharks? Yes. I mean, I guess go with what you <laughs> know. Donnie, didn't you review porn for uh, No Nut November? Nick perked up. It, yeah, you got, got my put, attention. <laughs> it got put off, but I am still doing a full month of story porn. So parody porn that has story mm-hmm. that has something going on other than just fucking, but then also yes the golden era of porn because yeah. they actually had something going on in that shit versus just banging and screwing. Mm. When I was a kid, I was riding my bike down to uh, go work out. Uh, Is this and the fence story. The fence story. <laughs> no, it was, no. Uh, but I found like a box of pornos and one, like I was like oh man I'm gonna have to come back and grab these on my way home because obviously I wasn't gonna take them to the gym and uh because I'm I want to get my pump on when I get home too uh Double pump. but one of them was this porno and it was about this like nerd who I can't remember what it was but he gets sent back in time to like ye oldie medieval times and I, I was like, oh, man, this is fucking hilarious and great. But then it turned into a foot fetish movie at the same time. And I was like, OK, this is really weird because that's not the like the era yeah. that yeah. I want to get into feet. It's like that's 
<laughs> just corns all over them. Bunions. Oh. I hate a good bunion. Oh, man. Yeah, if I'm going to go shrimping, I want some nice, clean toes. Don't call it shrimping, man. I'm sorry that you guys love shrimp, but that's the term for you're, it. You're fucking up shrimp for me. It's terrible. <laughs> hate it. What do, what do we got coming up next time, Peter? I don't know. I, I this truly stop. don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's another movie. <laughs> the Rock versus National Treasure. I think that's right. With Seth. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you for our uh, Sparkle Buddies on Patreon. Uh, Josh, John, Josie, Rico, Matt, and Adam. And Cage Dancers, Ira, John, Freeman, and Lance. And you can find us on all the shit. We're Cage Match Pod or Cage underscore Match underscore Pod. Send us money on Patreon. Yeah. Give us money because for reasons. We'll do good stuff with it. I don't know. Maybe. We'll do stuff with it. Double. Mescaline. Double pump. Mescaline. <laughs> Little mescaline. <laughs> Bye. 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 What deep thought are you in? Whether or not I have to go to the bathroom before we start. You might as well. Yeah, I mean, you're in the correct moment to go do it if you want to do it. Don't make us pull the show over. Yeah, quit (laughs) wasting my time, Sean. Whip that hog out. (laughs) Go take a pissless cage. A pissless cage, indeed. (laughs) Yeah, so I I don't know if you guys have listened to our show at all, but we're... I have. mm, Dumb. Um, You can (laughs) say and do whatever you want on here. Butt jokes, whatever. It really doesn't matter. Peter's going to edit this to make us all sound racist in the end anyway. (laughs) Every time. We have a history with the Polish. (laughs) 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 All right, you guys are going to make perfect sense for us. When, when, when we recorded uh, about this before, our guest uh, pointed out to us the whole hierarchy oh, yeah. of llamas versus alpacas. So I, and, uh, I, apparently it's rich people that own the alpacas. Yeah. OK, so there was a guy at um, the ultrasound spot that I went to recently and uh he was like, oh, cool, cool llama shirt. And I know that the llamas are the ones with the long necks because L long llama. <laughs> And then I looked at llamas and I was like, and, and I looked at alpacas. I was like, they both have fucking long necks. What? They both have long necks. This doesn't mean anything to me. Like now I, I, I'm worse off now. Now you're just more confused. Yeah. Now I'm just assuming everything's a llama. Alpacas are softer. What's a llama?